Dear followers and fans of La Criminotica. First of all, I want to express my sincere thanks for being part of this community and for the constant support you give us. Today, I want to address a detail that you will observe in our next videos, the desynchronization between the narration and the lip movement of our virtual avatar. The task of designing a virtual avatar that perfectly syncs with every word, tone, and emphasis of a lengthy video is a highly specialized and onerous challenge. In order to continue to provide you with frequent and in-depth episodes on the historical crimes and intrigues of the human mind, we have chosen to use a repeating 125-minute sequence throughout the video. This technical detail in no way undermines the rigor or quality of the content we provide. It is simply a necessary adjustment to continue the production and broadcast of these fascinating episodes. I trust in your understanding regarding this choice and I hope you continue to enjoy each story that we prepare for you with dedication and care. Your opinions and suggestions are always welcome, because your satisfaction is our maximum motivation. Once again, thank you for being such an engaged and passionate audience. Together we will explore the darkest corners of criminal history. We've toned down the background music by five notches to avoid distractions and potential annoyances. We start. Today we enter the shadowy streets of Delavan, Wisconsin, where on the night of June 9, 2007, the tranquility of a small town was brutally interrupted. The sound of shots that were mistaken for fireworks shattered the peace of the community. Six people were killed, including newborn twins, and a two-year-old girl was seriously injured. Behind this horrible act, a story of complicated relationships, jealousy, and domestic violence. Get ready to immerse yourself in the disturbing story of Ambrosio and Alco Ramirez, an episode that shook not only Delavan, but all those who found out about the event. We are going to find out what led this man to commit such a heinous act and what the impact was on the community and those who survived that fateful night. Ambrosio Analco Ramirez Classification, Mass Murderer Features, Domestic Dispute, Jealousy Number of Victims, 5 Date of the Murders, June 9, 2007 Date of Birth, 1985 Victims, his ex-girlfriend Nicole McAfee, his newborn twins, McAfee's sister, and a friend. Kill Method, Shot. Location, Delavan, Wisconsin, USA. Status, he committed suicide the same day. Six dead in a house in Delavan. Small and placid city slept through a quiet night but woke up to a tragedy. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. June 10, 2007. This story was written in Milwaukee by Greg J. Borowski and John Diedrich. It was reported in Delavan by Anissa Johnson and Erica Perez and in Milwaukee by Linda Spice. Delavan, on a clear night, at the close of a perfect June day, it was easy to fall asleep. And the noises in the distance, the bangs in the dark, well, they had to be children and fireworks. But it wasn't. Residents of South 2nd Street woke up Sunday to a shocking tragedy, six dead, including newborn twins. A two-year-old girl hospitalized after being shot in the chest. And a tangle of relationships and connections that the authorities would not discuss, even until Sunday night. Police would not say if the shooter was among the dead and if the series of killings ended in suicide. But they issued a statement saying the community was not in danger from the attacker. Walworth County Prosecutor Phil Koss said he could not reveal all the details of the case, but added, it is clearly a domestic situation. He said the police had no one in custody, nor are they looking for anyone, but nothing can be ruled out. There are still unanswered questions. The identity of the victims was not released. But family members identified one, Ambrosio Analco, as the father of all three children. Another, Vanessa Iverson, 19, was home visiting friends Saturday night, her family said. We want to make sure that no stone is left unturned, 
Delavan Police Chief Timothy O'Neill said at an afternoon news conference, but did not answer questions from reporters. State investigators are assisting in the case. The investigation is an ongoing and complex death case, and we're certainly not going to make premature comments, Justice Department spokesman Kevin St. John said. For others, the confusion left them in shock. Any tragedy like this has to affect the entire community, said Don Brick, a 48-year resident. It's incomprehensible that something like this could happen in a community like this. The neighborhood, of course, is quiet. After all, Delavan is a sleepy town of about 7,956 residents about 40 miles southwest of Milwaukee in Walworth County. The house, a two-story white duplex, is a few blocks from downtown. The streets are lined with old houses that surround Phoenix Park, a large green space with children's games and playing fields. Most residents say there were no signs of trouble with the family, tenants who moved in about eight months ago. However, a neighbor mentioned that he heard screaming and doors slamming recently. But on Saturday there were no shouting, no arguments. Just the shots. Based on a 911 call, these occurred just after 10.30 p.m. The address, a few blocks from the police station. In a vehicle outside the home, police found a two-year-old girl, shot in the chest. She was taken by ambulance to Memorial Hospital in Rockford, Illinois, about 40 miles away, and then airlifted to the University of Wisconsin Hospital in Madison. On Sunday afternoon, she was listed in serious condition. Inside the house, on the second level of the duplex, the panorama was even more bleak, there were the two babies, twins, both dead. And four adults, all shot. All dead. One of the deceased was Ambrosio Analco, according to his cousin Marco Pastrana. Analco had been at Pastrana's house earlier that night. He had with him his two-year-old daughter, named Jasmine, and the twins. It is not clear how many months they were exactly. The group left around 9 p.m., Pastrana said, back to the house where the children lived with his mother, Nicole McAfee. That is where the shots occurred. Pastrana commented that Analco and McAfee had previously lived together, but there were problems and they separated. He did not offer further details. McAfee lived in the house with her sister and another man, Casper Huerta, according to Jose Huerta, Casper's brother. Casper Huerta was not shot, his brother said. Jose Huerta mentioned that he once saw bruises on McAfee's face. She said that, Analco, was the one who hit her. I told her to go to the police. She did not say anything about her. He had told her that he would kill her, Huerta said. But Pastrana assured that his cousin could not have hurt his children. He loves his children, he wouldn't do anything to hurt them, he stated. He wasn't drinking. He didn't do anything. He was just there to see his children. I'm upset, but also angry. What kind of person would do something like that? In an interview with WTMJ TV, Channel 4, the police chief stated that the house was not one of those that he generated calls. He indicated that the police had little contact with the people who lived there. Kay Makara said her daughter, 19-year-old Vanessa Iverson, was one of those killed. She was home to visit friends. She was very happy, very effervescent, friendly, Makara said. She was always there for anyone in the family. And she always avoided confrontation. She always intervened if two people were fighting. She was the mediator, Makara mentioned. We had our family disputes, but she always tried to make peace. As she spoke, tears ran down her face. I want answers, she said. Dwayne Iverson, Vanessa's brother, mentioned that he last spoke to her at 9 p.m. of Saturday. Everything seemed fine, he commented. Such was the atmosphere in the neighborhood on Saturday night, as the lights went out in house after house. 
Jesus Valadez came home Saturday around the time of the shootings and went into shower. Although he lives next door, he didn't hear anything and didn't know something was wrong until Sunday morning when he took out the trash. There were police cars everywhere, Valadez said. The same scene was repeated in other houses on the street. Soon many were outside their homes, some sitting on lawn chairs, watching the investigation unfold on the other side of the police tape. At one point, Walworth County Coroner John Griebel arrived, carrying several folded body bags under his arms. Later, the bodies were carried out on stretchers. Leanda Mina, who has lived on the streets for 17 years, was among those watching the riot. She said people tend to move out of the unit where the shootings occurred, so she doesn't get to know them well. There were never any problems there, she said. They are always calm people. It's quite sudden for something like this to happen. Mina heard the shots before going to bed, although she didn't know it until the morning. I didn't pay much attention to it, she said. I turned off the TV and went back to sleep. She thought they were children and firecrackers. But she wasn't. Domestic dispute leads to six deaths. Twins among the dead at home in Wisconsin, two-year-old girl survives. June 11, 2007, Associated Press. Delavan, Wisconsin, a domestic dispute erupted into a mass homicide in southern Wisconsin, leaving six people, including two young children, shot dead and a two-year-old girl shot in the chest. A prosecutor said late Sunday that no one was in custody, but police were not looking for a suspect and no one else was in danger. Authorities often use that kind of language when the shooter is among the dead. What we have is a complicated death scene and we are looking into all the possibilities, said Kevin St. John, a spokesman for the State Department of Justice, which is leading the investigation. Walworth County Prosecutor Philip Koss said the shooting was part of a domestic dispute, but he would not give details until autopsies were completed and the crime scene fully evaluated. Officers, responding to a report of gunshots, stormed into a frame a duplex late Saturday night with weapons drawn, kicking in the door, according to neighbor Richard Heidemann. He saw two paramedics enter behind them and leave minutes later. That's when I knew they were all dead, Heidemann said. As the bodies were removed, a bystander fell to his knees on a neighbor's lawn and raised his hands to heaven in prayer. The two-year-old girl was found in a nearby van, seriously injured. A male family member who escaped the shooting was assisting investigators. Revealed names. Police released the names of the deceased on Monday. The adults were Nicole Marie McAfee, 19, mother of the three children, McAfee's sister, Ashley Lynn Huerta, 21, McAfee's ex-boyfriend and father of the children, Ambrosio Analco, 23, and Vanessa Iverson, 19, a family friend of McAfee's. McAfee's twins, Isaiah Christian Analco and Argenis Analco, who were less than a year old, were also killed. The twin sister, two-year-old Jasmine, was in serious condition at the University of Wisconsin Hospital in Madison. Marco Pastrana, Ambrosio Analco's cousin, said Analco no longer lived with the children's mother. Analco left Pastrana's home Saturday night to drop off the children with her in the duplex, Pastrana said. The complex's owner, Dwayne Brelanthin, said two sisters rented the apartment upstairs. He did not want to name them, referring to the police. He said they had lived there for about a year and a half and never had a problem with them. I want answers. Kay Makara tearfully said Sunday that her daughter, Iverson, came to the apartment the night before to visit her friends. My daughter, she said. I want answers. On Monday morning, a group of teddy bears, stuffed bunnies, a dinosaur, and candles were under a tree outside the duplex. Neighbor Leandra Mina, 65, said she heard what she thought were firecrackers coming from the house around 10.30 p.m. of Saturday. I thought they were firecrackers because it was close to the 4th of July, she said. 
police cordoned off two blocks around the duplex for most of the day. On Sunday morning, neighbors, some still squinting, gathered on the sidewalks, watching investigators remove bodies from the home. Tina McKinnon, 37, lives a block away and said there was never a commotion at the home. The children were very nice, she said. Delavan, home to about 8,000 people, sits among farm fields and forests between Janesville and Milwaukee. The P.D. Circus Barnum's, the world's greatest show, was founded in Delavan in 1871, and statues of circus animals decorate the town square. Delavan, homicides follow the family annihilation pattern. Madison, murdered baby twins. Her mother and her sister were shot at the same time, along with a friend who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The audacity of the massacre that left six dead in Delavan has people asking, how could this happen? But experts said Tuesday the killings follow a pattern that has been repeated often enough in the US that social scientists have given it a name, family annihilation. The pattern is very strong, said Jack Levin, director of the Brudnick Center on Violence and Conflict at Northeastern University in Boston and author of the book, Extreme Killing. It is almost always a husband-father who methodically executes his family members. He plans the attack well in advance. He has suffered a prolonged period of frustration and depression. He experiences what he sees as the catastrophic loss of his children. He blames everyone except himself for his troubles. Delavan police discovered the bodies of Ambrosio Analco, his ex-girlfriend Nicole McAfee, his twins, McAfee's sister, and a friend Saturday night in a duplex about two blocks from the police station. They had been shot. They also found McAfee and Analco's two-year-old daughter in a van outside. She had been shot through her chest, but she was treated and later released from the University of Wisconsin Hospital. Walworth County authorities said the incident was a homicide-suicide with Analco as the shooter. Gaspar Huerta, McAfee's brother-in-law, said he escaped the shooting by jumping out of a window and called police from a neighbor's house. An audio recording released by police shows that he told the operator that McAfee's boyfriend was in the apartment shooting everyone. The Violence Policy Center in Washington, D.C., estimates that about 1,200 Americans die each year in homicide suicides. Their study of the first six months of 2005 found that almost all the murderers were men who used weapons, and three-quarters of the cases involved a romantic partner, such as a girlfriend, wife, or ex-spouse. The most recent report from the Wisconsin Coalition Against Domestic Violence found that 28 people were killed in the state in 2004 as a result of domestic violence. Five perpetrators committed suicide. Levin estimated that there are about 16 to 20 family decimations each year, which he defined as four or more victims, usually relatives. It starts with depression and a sense of ownership or possession over a partner, feelings more common in men, Levin said. Those feelings eventually produce threats. Court records show Analco had no domestic violence convictions in Wisconsin, but Victor Huerta said his sister-in-law had told him Analco had threatened to kill everyone in the apartment if McAfee deceived him. Analco had found a letter for McAfee from another man, he said. Experts said that kind of jealous anger can turn into selfish anger, often at the end of a relationship, that can wrap anyone around the main target. It's like gasoline. When you spill gasoline and ignite it, a lot of things burn, said UW Madison professor of psychiatry Burr Eichelman. Family killers tend to be socially isolated husbands and fathers, Levin said. Analco, which moved to the United States from Mexico, may have found itself in that situation in Delavan, he said. They also want revenge against the women they say ruined their lives, Levin said. Court records show Analco was earning $8.80 an hour in March and had been ordered to pay McAfee about $442 a month in child support. They see killing the children as a way to devastate her mate before killing her too. Killing friends and extended family is more unusual, Levin said. 
McAfee's sister and friend could have been killed to inflict more pain on her, or they could have simply been in the way, Levin said. If Analco was indeed the shooter, the easy answer is he killed everyone who was available, Levin said. But I think there's more to this. He killed everyone associated with her, McAfee, from her. He took revenge on her by destroying everything she loved. Then comes the last act, suicide. Without that person, said Megan Strasheen, an assistant professor at Marquette University who studies domestic violence, they don't see a reason to go on living. Delavan, six killed in massacre. Delavan, at a press conference Wednesday, Delavan police officials stated that the Delavan massacre should be considered a homicide suicide and that the killings were committed by a single gunman. Police officials identified the gunman as 23-year-old Ambrosio Analco. Investigators wrapped up their investigation Tuesday at the home where six people were shot to death and a two-year-old girl was shot and wounded. Now, officials are waiting for forensic evidence before the case can be officially closed. Ambrosio Analco shot the others, including his ex-girlfriend and his three children, and then himself. Analco was among the dead. I was at my house and my sister-in-law's boyfriend came and started shooting everyone, Gaspar Huerta said in the recording. The operator does not seem to believe what he is being told. Did you see the person do this? The operator asks. Yes, Huerta said. After giving the address, he pleads, would you please hurry up? In the duplex were found dead. Ambrosio Analco, 23. The alleged gunman. He didn't live in the duplex. Nicole McAfee, 19. Analco's ex-girlfriend. Ambrosio and Nicole's six-month-old twins, Isaiah and Argenis. Nicole McAfee's sister, Ashley Huerta, 21. Ashley's friend, Vanessa Iverson, 19, of Delavan. She found two-year-old Jasmine Analco, daughter of Analco and McAfee, injured in a van outside the residence. The girl was treated at the University of Wisconsin Hospital for a gunshot wound to the chest, the bullet barely grazed her heart. A spokesman said Jasmine was released on Wednesday. Huerta said on the 911 call that she escaped the shooting by jumping from the second-story roof of the duplex. When asked who the shooter was, he gives a hard-to-decipher name. When they ask him again, he says that he can't remember. Is he still there with the gun? The operator asked. I think so, Huerta said. He's over there shooting my wife and all the kids. Background Gaspar Huerta's brother, Victor Huerta, said Nicole McAfee and Ambrosio Analco often argued. Analco once threatened her with a gun a few years ago, Victor Huerta said. Victor Huerta said his brother, Gaspar, and Gaspar's wife, Ashley Huerta, lived in the apartment and took in Nicole McAfee and her children after she parted ways with Analco. Gaspar Huerta was not happy with the situation, Victor Huerta said. He wanted to live alone with his wife. But he helped take care of the children, Victor Huerta said, and whenever Analco came, Gaspar would go to another room because he felt that Analco was not a good father. Victor Huerta said he visited his brother, his brother's wife, McAfee, and the three children around 6 p.m. of Saturday. Ashley Huerta told him that Analco had told Nicole McAfee that she would kill everyone in the apartment if she ever caught her cheating on him. Victor Huerta said that Analco had discovered a letter from another man to McAfee. Nicole McAfee's friends told a similar story. They said Ambrosio Analco had repeatedly abused Nicole over several years. In fact, Nicole told a friend that Ambrosio had threatened to kill her. Nicole's friend, Molly Lawallen, said that Ambrosio had found a letter that Nicole had received from a boyfriend named Emmanuel. But Marco Pastrana, Analco's cousin, said Monday that Analco could not have been responsible. Analco and the children were at his house on Saturday before Analco left around 9 p.m. to take the children back to his mother, he said. 
Police took a report of gunshots in the duplex around 10.30 p.m. I don't think he killed Nicole, or her children, or her sister, Pastrana said. This tragic event has left the community in shock. The motive behind such an act of violence continues to be the subject of speculation and analysis by experts, but what is undeniable is the pain it has caused the affected families and the entire community. Neighbors, friends and family have begun leaving flowers, toys and candles at the crime scene in memory of the victims. Meanwhile, authorities continue to work on collecting evidence and testimony to try to fully understand what led to this devastating event. Local organizations are also offering counseling services for those who need help dealing with the trauma of the tragedy. The community as a whole is looking for ways to come together and support each other through this difficult time. A memorial vigil for the victims is expected to take place in the coming days to allow the community to come together and pay tribute to the lives lost. What happened? Officers who rushed to the area Saturday night due to the sound of gunshots found two-year-old Jasmine Analco in a white minivan in the driveway of the home. She had a gunshot wound to her chest. First she was taken to Lakeland Hospital, then transferred to Rockford Memorial Hospital in Illinois, and then she was airlifted to UW Hospital in Madison. Walworth County SWAT officers entered the home next to the van at 309 South 2nd Street and found six people who had been shot to death. Neighbor Richard Heidemann said the officers stormed into the home with weapons drawn, kicking in the door. He saw two paramedics go in behind them and come out two minutes later. That's when I knew they were all dead, Heidemann said. The deceased were found on the second floor of the duplex. Delavan Police Chief Timothy O'Neill said a gun was recovered inside. The Walworth Sheriff's Department was called to the scene to assist with the investigation. Authorities spent most of Sunday removing the bodies from the home. James Brandenburg, 57, of Delavan, fell to his knees as police removed the bodies and raised his arms to the sky. He spent several minutes earlier, also on his knees, praying. It's tragic. It's getting worse all the time, he said. If we want, we can put an end to this. Police said they were speaking with relatives and getting more information about the situation at the home. Chief O'Neill told a news conference Sunday that the investigation had been turned over to the State Division of Criminal Investigation. Victor Huerta said that he spoke to his brother Gaspar on Monday morning, he is really crying, upset but Victor did not know where Gaspar was or where he was on Monday afternoon. Victor Huerta wanted the police to speed up his work because he could put his brother under suspicion, who would never do something like that. He always tries to run away from trouble. Official Records Analco was ordered in December 2005 to pay $25 a month to cover $4,165 in Jasmine's birth expenses. He was held in contempt in March for failing to pay child support and ordered to pay $442 a month for the three children. A Walworth County judge sentenced him to six months in jail, but he suspended the sentence while he paid child support. Records show he and McAfee shared a house in Elkhorn at one point and lived together in a different apartment in Delavan before McAfee moved into the duplex where the shootings occurred. A makeshift altar of teddy bears, stuffed rabbits, a dinosaur and candles stood under a tree outside the shooting scene Monday. People came all day to pay homage and place objects in front of the house. The building's landlord, Dwayne Brellenthin, said the other couple who lived in the duplex were on vacation Saturday. Brellenthin did not understand why anyone would shoot small children. It's tragic, that's all you can say. Why would someone kill children? I can understand someone getting angry and losing control, but killing children, that's crazy. Sisters Nicole McAfee and Ashley Huerta rented the upper apartment in the duplex where the murders occurred. Police asked the landlord to open some locked areas of the duplex on Monday, but no other victims were found. Reaction of family and neighbors 
Relatives of the victims are shocked and say they cannot accept what happened. Dee Dee, and to Nicole McAfee and Ashley Huerta, said, it's overwhelming to lose four members in one night. She continued, we miss you, we love you and you will never leave our hearts. Mary Balbach, Vanessa Iverson's aunt, said she is tired of police silence. Iverson's mother, Kay Makara, can't find closure, she said. Right now he has nothing, Balbach said. Victor Huerta, the brother of Gaspar Huerta, who was unharmed in the shooting, is also distraught. He said that Nicole McAfee and Ashley Huerta were his best friends. It's hard to forget. That's mostly what happens when something like this happens. You need to learn to forget, but I don't think it's going to go away. Pete Brancho, 59, who lives across the street from the shooting site, said he heard six shots Saturday night but brushed it off because neighborhood kids play with firecrackers all the time, said. A minute later, he heard a series of about three shots, he said. He looked outside a few minutes later and saw the police cordoning off the area. It's terrifying, he said. Especially when there's a baby involved. There's no answer for it. Another neighbor, Leandra Mina, 65, said she heard what she thought were firecrackers coming from the house around 10.30 p.m. of Saturday. I thought they were firecrackers because it was close to the 4th of July, she said. Mina mentioned that she did not know the people who lived in the duplex. This is something we never thought could happen here, she said. Tina McKinnon, 37, lives a block away and said there was never any disturbance at the house. The children were very nice, she said. Governor Jim Doyle issued a statement Monday saying his thoughts and prayers were with all those affected by the heartbreaking shootings, which he said were a reminder that we need to work to ensure the safety of families and communities across the state. Delavan is a quiet community of 8,000 people about 40 miles southwest of Milwaukee. The White House where the shootings occurred is on a tree-lined street that is a block from a United Methodist Church. The city has a two-block downtown with brick-lined streets. The P.D. Circus Barnum's, the world's greatest show, was founded in Delavan in 1871. Call to Delavan 911 from a survivor. June 15, 2007. Delavan, Delavan police have released the first 911 call reporting a shooting that left six dead in a duplex. The caller was Gaspar Huerta. He escaped the massacre by jumping from a second-story balcony. Ashley, Gasper's wife, was killed in the massacre. Operator, Delavan 911, what is your emergency? Caller, yes, I live at 301, South 2nd Street. Operator, aha. Uh -huh. Caller, Apartment A. I have a gentleman here who says there have been shots outside. Operator, okay. Did you hear them yourself? Caller, no, I didn't. The man is here, he wants to talk to you. Operator, okay, pass it on. Gaspar Huerta, hello. Operator, you mean, shots? Huerta, yes, I was inside my house and my sister-in-law's boyfriend arrives and starts shooting everyone, inaudible, from the roof. Operator, did you see the person doing this? Orchard, yes. Operator, where? Orchard, 309, 2nd Street. Can you please hurry up? Operator, what is the name of the person who is shooting? Orchard, inaudible. Operator, what is his name? Puerta, uh, I can't think of his, his name right now. Operator, is he still there with the gun? Huerta, I believe so. Operator, he's at 309. Huerta, I went up to the roof, I jumped. Operator, is he shooting upstairs? Huerta, he is there shooting my wife and all the children. Operator, he started shooting at your. Huerta, I don't know. Operator, hey, listen at 309, 
South 2nd Street is he shooting your wife and kids? Huerta, inaudible, I saw my wife shoot and I saw hers shoot, hers, I don't know, all the people, there was another one of my friends, my wife's friends. Operator, okay, so she's in the house now. Orchard, yes. Operator, okay, wait a minute. Conclusion of the episode in Delavan. The sleepy town of Delavan, with a community of about 8,000, located about 40 miles southwest of Milwaukee, was rocked by a horrifying incident of violence. A shooting at a duplex resulted in the deaths of six people, leaving the community in shock and mourning. The incident began when shots were heard on Saturday night. A two-year-old girl, Jasmine Analco, was found in a white minivan with a gunshot wound to the chest. Despite attempts to provide medical care at various hospitals, the seriousness of her situation was evident. Additionally, six people were found shot to death in a nearby home, all on the second floor of the duplex. Walworth County SWAT officers responded quickly and with the assistance of the Sheriff's Department conducted the investigation. James Brandenburg, a local resident, clearly devastated, fell to his knees witnessing the scene. The police began speaking with relatives and endeavored to better understand the situation in the affected home. Police Chief Timothy O'Neill announced that the investigation had been transferred to the State Division of Criminal Investigation. The reactions of the family and neighbors were disbelief and pain. Dee Dee, the aunt of two of the victims, expressed her anguish at losing four family members in one night. Others in the community also shared her reactions, with some mentioning that they had mistaken the shots for fireworks due to the proximity of the 4th of July. Gaspar Huerta, who managed to escape the massacre by jumping off a balcony, called 911 and provided a harrowing account of the events. He revealed that he watched as his sister-in-law's boyfriend started shooting everyone, including his wife, Ashley, who was tragically killed in the shooting. The impact of the incident on Delavan was profound. The streets where once the P.T. Barnum Circus, the greatest show on earth, was founded, they were now covered in mourning in memories of the tragedy. A makeshift shrine was erected with stuffed toys and candles to honor the victims. Governor Jim Doyle expressed his condolences and noted the need to ensure safety in all communities in the state. The episode in Delavan is not only a reminder of the value of life, but also of the fragility of human existence and the need to stick together as a community in times of tragedy. With this case we say goodbye for today in La Criminotica. Every story we share reminds us of the fragility of life and the importance of caring for each other. Don't forget to subscribe, comment and share the video to keep us informed and never forget. Because by understanding the darkness, we can appreciate the light more. Until the next episode.